Between dating, love, and sex, and who better to do that with than one of the sexiest women on the planet, Pamela Anderson. She has literally, yes, yes, uh, she has literally now written the book on this topic, and we'll get to that in a minute when she joins us live. But first, the woman, the icon, watch. Logan, watch your water. Nearly 30 years ago, Pamela Anderson slow-mo jogged onto the scene and into pop culture history as C.J. Parker in Baywatch. That little girl could have drowned, John. She has graced the cover of Playboy 14 times, more than anyone else in the magazine's history. She's also a loving parent to sons Brandon and Dylan with rocker Tommy Lee. She famously wet on the beach in Cancun, Mexico in 1995, while wearing a white bikini. Now, Anderson has a brand new book out, Lust for Love, and it's all about sex and intimacy. She's also an advocate, pushing a new ad for the National Limousine Association that warns riders about the potential dangers of ride hailing apps. You look very strong and healthy, so no need for health insurance. Please welcome Pamela Anderson. <laughs> Wall of Fame. Oh dear, wow, that's crazy. It's fun to see those young pictures of you on the beach. Yeah, the, the young Baywatch. ones are fine. The old ones are scary. <laughs> Not and the ones really. about 10 years ago are even more frightening. <laughs> it, now, is it true your life with Playboy began at 22? 22 years old? I don't know how old I was. I don't, you know, this whole age thing. It's just not a, not a, I don't know. I, but you just got, does, without age. You got for, wow, started at a very young age and sort of, you know, thrust into this crazy world of fame and sex kitten and, and goddess and all the things that people called you. And I love that you say in this book, um, you felt like you were sort of twins. There was, there was the real you and then there was the public Pamela Anderson. And isn't that a sign of craziness when you talk about yourself in the third person? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it did feel like a cartoon character a little bit because I didn't really feel like that person. And, and then maybe even you know, posing for Playboy, it was it was easier for me to pretend I was somebody else, just kind of living this fantasy, this dream. So I did kind of have maybe a little bit of a multiple personality disorder. Mm -hmm. And f and fame came quickly, and was in your case, you became a household name. I mean, everyone everyone knew Pam Anderson and the, the marriage to Tommy Lee, and and that didn't help. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what what did that do to you? That that level of fame. Well, it just kind of creeps up on you. So, you know, when I, I remember going to the football game in, in Vancouver and then being put on the big screen and then doing a commercial for Labatt's Beer and then going to uh, L.A. to post for Playboy cover and then meeting Tommy and, you know, just things. You know, I was doing home improvement and I remember going to an ATM machine to get some money, but I was still wearing the Lisa the Tool Time outfit. Oh, boy. And so someone was like, Lisa. And I thought, where am I? How do they know who I am? But I was wearing the outfit, you know. So yeah. then I realized, wow, people... Then it started, people started recognizing me and, and slowly, you know, it becomes your life and, you know, you start being protective and, and make mistakes and it just happens. I don't know. It's hard to tell you what, it didn't just change really quickly. Was, yeah. You just find yourself, it's like, Just find yourself say, dealing with new issues, new things. You, you are known internationally as a, as a sex symbol, as a bombshell. And so it's, it's so fun that you've written this book calling for a sensual revolution for yes. more intimacy because I know that you see there's a problem. You say the book is about the enduring art of human intimacy and how it's been lost. Well, there's so much access to everything, so much access to information and to people. And I believe in, in a committed relationships and I think we're stronger in pairs and we need each other more than ever in this kind of robotic, kind of desensitized time. And having two sons I'm concerned about these dating apps and, you know, all sorts of apps, those sorts of things. Uh, and, I, and I just want to, I'm, it's, not a, it's not a book about what's right or wrong. It's a book about taking stock in what we're doing. Are we replacing some of these behaviors with other things? Are we, are we resorting to pornography or are we loving our wives and our, and our um, committed relationships? And learning how to have great sex within a committed relationship is the best, not this kind of... Um, you know, so many people and empty experiences. And I have a lot of friends from the 60s, and they, a lot of them have regrets, and they're alone. You know, because we, we need to 
stay together. And I, you know, I don't have these conspiracy theories sometimes that they're trying to separate us. You know, I think they think that we need to remember uh, love and, and committed relationships and that we're stronger in pairs and we need each other because, you know, we, we, we have so much information and um, we want to be happy. Well, I know you, you write about how, because she co-wrote the, the book. Um, yes, with, with Rabbi, Rabbi Shmuley. Shmuley. <laughs> yeah, Rabbi Shmuley. And, <laughs> and it's better. I know, it's so fun that yeah. the two of you paired, but the, the stories about, you know, women coming to you and saying, I, I'm sitting upstairs in my, le my negligee and my husband is downstairs ignoring me on the computer, the computer like surfing internet porn. And this is a 20-year-old girl. <laughs> and she's sitting there flesh and blood saying, here I am. Yes. And, and that girl is not alone. A lot of women have had that same experience mm -hmm. of feeling completely distant from their partner because of the Internet. And, you know, Shmuley has great advice. So I'm the one who told him you should write a book because he talks about mental fidelity, how to empty your phone of um, temptation and things like this. And I know it's a little bit... I'm not a prude, I don't think. We know. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I, 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 I believe that we can be distracted and we can also take, make effort. And, you know, you can't really... It's hard to tell somebody else to pay more attention to me, pay more attention to me. I guess what you can do is pay more attention to them and, and you know, take these things off your phone or, or just, just, you know, control yourself. It's mm -hmm. self-control. And I think it really pays off in the end. And delayed gratification... And delayed gratification is, Either, is you know, sexy it, and helps yes, ignite a marriage. So now, sexy. wait, she's got advice for that for long term marriage and how to spice it up. If Not you've that been I've had long term marriages. Well, <laughs> so that's another funny thing. We'll talk about it. Sorry. <laughs> After the break, don't go I'm just away. Keep trying. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.